Hi everybody, this is chapter 12 in Guthrie. This is the one that we would have had had we all been in class, but you know, me being nice, it let us finish on time, so uh, you missed this lecture. Um, remember, this is the Guthrie textbook. So this is the school business administrator perspective on, perspective on money. They're a different perspective than the superintendent. You need to understand we're gonna basically compare these topics, and then you're gonna learn about them later in Lewis. And there's that jump, and there's that connection. This, then Lewis, will help you with the ideas in this chapter. So you, we're going to talk about investment policy considerations, strategies, and tactics. How do you invest? What's cash for investment look like? In technical terms for investment. So what are our goals when we invest for any cash management? Availability, do we have money? Investment, can we use it to increase the cash available? Yield, can we get the best amount back? and safety to protect the assets of the school district against loss. That's the key. You need to make sure you're protecting the district when possible. They're harder to manage and keep accountable because schools change. There's so much more of a balance in place to protect for safety, but it takes longer to accomplish things. Because our investments have to be safe, we have to protect how we invest. And that can be a problem and that can be a challenge. So cash management was easy. Um, there were constant tax levies and they were consistent. Property values increased, um, you know, inflation happened, then the bubble burst. Um, the bubble did not burst as much in Oklahoma as it did in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Pennsylvania. We did well, I mean, our inflation, our bubble might burst, that would really not be cool for me, but um, the bubble could burst. Um, banks were in excellent conditions and rates of return were underestimated. Um, mind you, I know I'm saying this, but Think of our presidents who were in charge. This is Reagan and Clinton stuff, so try to remember that. You know, when we're looking at cash management, think about the Clinton administration and the Reagan administration. So cash for, for investment, this is your equation of life, and this is, you know, Chris, this is your good equation that we use forever. It's revenues minus expenditures equal available cash. Any tax, this is really where your revenue comes from, and expenditures come from policy mandates and school system discretion. Cash for investment is the amount that the school is legally entitled to spend. Most districts operate on a July 1st through June 30th fiscal year. I'm going to explain to you what that looks like when we do the lecture in the Lewis book, but for now, you know that this is the truth. We've already talked about the biggest cost for a school district being personnel. Um, most school districts have cash flow available at their discretion to show how much comes in and out of the district. Um, School business managers normally are free to pursue investments. Um, yours are. Um, they're going to go over policy, but they can't. If there are short-term investments and the district has established capital, the district can look at those options to obtain money, but the investments must be public and open to question and open to, to debate. That is a big idea. So when we're talking about investments, we have to ask ourselves questions. We have to say, is this legal? And obviously, if it's not legal, you can't do it. You have to ask yourself, what's the nature and the amount of risk to be assumed? So is it, there's going to be high risk? Is it worth it for the district? Unless there's a big reward, probably not. What's the yield? And then more importantly, what's the degree of liquidity? And I'm going to go over that one a little more in depth. So the state legislation controls money. Um, superintendent and the business manager can make decisions, but they must be approved by the school board. Um, investments in the state of Oklahoma, local policy trust, Trump state, that's different. I mean, it really is different here. So I want you to know that, and I want you to be aware of that. Um, all investments are risky, um, but you have to be transparent to stakeholders. I am a low-risk person when it comes to investments and pensions. I would never invest in a motor company. I would never invest in a gas and oil company. Um, I am a blue chip all the way. I know it's going to earn me a little bit of money, and I'm fine with that. That's the type of investments that schools should do. Small amounts are better than no return at all, and I believe that. Um, if I know that I can get 3% back on my pension, I'd rather do that than risk it for 10 or 20. What's the yield? Um, the yield really happens in bonds, um, and that's similar to the bonds we grew up with receiving in our family. Just know that we're going to talk about that later in the course. So liquidity is important. So you have to know the degree of liquidity in some of the assets that you have. If there's an emergency and you need money now, what are you going to do? If there's investments, can you easily convert them to cash? If so, are you paying a penalty on those conversions? 
Um, if there's not a way to make money and you need it, what can you do? Do you have to borrow at a higher interest rate? Can you liquidize something at a lower interest rate? That's important. And those are very, very, very difficult decisions. So we're going to talk about some investment strategies. Um, I'm covering this for you as future superintendents because if you're a business administrator, you should know this stuff. Um, a normal year yield curve is the one that you see um, that you see in basic in just basic human beings. Inverted yield yield curve. I don't really see this that often, um, but that's one that if it's a lot more long term. This would be for school district if they can get one. A flat year yield curve basically says the return is going to be the same amount. Most districts go into inv investments knowing that flat yield curves, they're going to know what the interest they're going to get back on their funding is. And that's okay, and that's perfectly common as well. So one of the third ideas is benchmarking. You have to have a determination of what you want to get back off of that investment. Here's an issue and a problem with that. Districts should not depend on what they think they're getting back on an investment. Your salary is your salary. The nature of the members of the board and the business manager can determine risk the district is willing to assume and kind of what that looks like. So when you diversify, you put money in different locations. Districts will try to put money into many risk aversive areas in investments. Um, you know, I, this isn't how I do business. I put it on one location and I know I'm getting a return and I'm not going to lose money. Um, you know, once again, people can do what they want, um, but they suggest by putting it in different things, it gives the district more of a, of a diverse portfolio. All of you that do investing, um, you know that's the case. So pooling, uh, I don't know if this will work in Oklahoma, but we'll talk about it. Districts take money that they have that's, that's actual earned money, and then they take it and then they combine it with each other to yield more of a return. There has to be a strong relationship between leaderships in the school districts. Um, I see this happening in Native American entities, but I don't see it happening anywhere else. But you're pooling your investments. Board of Ed Education is contract out to a bank. If there's a good community bank in the school district, benefits are yielded by both parties. But big, big, big idea here, legal, legal deals. If somebody on the school board is involved in that bank, that can be a massive conflict of interest, and you have to know that. So now we're going to talk about some of these investment terms, just so you know what they are. Um, riding the yield curve is basically saying, I'm going to buy a bill, and I'm going to determine when I want to get out, probably in 90-day cycles. I can determine whether or not I'm going to stay in with a particular investment. If you know that you're not going to use the money immediately, keep the money and keep the yield curve, keep it going, keep it invested where it needs to be. Spreads. Um, if there's a period of economic instability, um, we're in one right now, um, you basically know that the higher interest rates are going to come eventually, and sometimes they're not, you stay, keep the money in the market until the higher interest rate comes. Is the money liquid, does the money have liquidity? Yes. But should you keep it in the system? Yes. So you have to find, if you're investing using a spread, you wait till the right time to get out. And it's difficult to figure out when the right time to get out is. Um, sometimes you can swap your investment ideas. You can take one security, swap it for another, hold it, and if you don't plan to get rid of the investment for a while, it's a good strategy. That's a swap, and swaps are common. CDs. I like CDs a lot. If I know that the money I have, I'm not going to use it, and I'm going to keep it in the CD for future use, um, it's a good thing. I can't take out on it, but I can put it in something for six months, and it can help me with an investment. I could earn maybe 3% on that. If I have you know, $5,000 in a savings account and I put it in a 3% CD and I know that that money's gonna sit there and I'm financially stable, I'm not gonna touch it, it's an extra couple $200 that I might get out of, out of six months. And that's all that money adds up and all that money counts. It's a short-term rollover. What could you do with that $200? Well, you could buy more computers in the building. Sometimes there are odd amounts of treasury notes. What that means is that you know treasury notes are normally issued in hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. Sometimes there are random ones that just happen to be there. You can buy them at a cheaper rate, um, and if the bank or investors give you the opportunity, you can buy odd lots that are left over. I think that's more of a bigger district thing. This is popular in Oklahoma. There's a whole chapter on arbitrage. And basically this tells you you can invest a certain amount of money in an investment and use the investment to pay, for, use the interest to pay the current project. So you know this interest is coming, the money's invested, and the interest is going to come back, 
and then that's what you use for the current, pros uh, current project. Why does this matter in Oklahoma? Because we have a lot of land. That's an asset. So it's a popular strategy to employ. This is definitely an Oklahoma thing. So you can sell bonds that are currently taken out. It can give you debt now, refinance it, um, and if the district has to refinance it, it long term, so that might be the only way to do so. Sometimes it can lead to a lower interest rate, but it will spread out more over time. Think about your automobiles. If you have the potential to buy an automobile at a, for, six month, for five years versus six years, you must always get the lower interest rate on five years. If you can do it in three years, you'll probably get a 0% interest rate. So try to, you know, same thing with selling off bonds and refinancing. The shorter the term, the better interest rate that you get. So what are different types of investments? We're going to go over each one of these real quick, too. I like how this one looks. That one turned out very nice. Um, U.S. Treasury bills, bonds, and notes are backed by the government, and they're the lowest risk. They, the interest rates are in effect. School systems buy these. They're fixed. They don't change. This would be a Lucivine investment strategy because I believe in the no risk, low risk, low interest rate, but at least I'm getting some money back. So then you have the government agency bonds. These are Fannie and Freddie and Jenny. Um, <laughs> they're options. You know the consequences involved in them. Um, I don't know what to say. CDs, shorter term investments for smaller amounts of return for larger investments. Um, Penalize, there are always penalties for withdrawal. This is more something I think that's a personal thing in terms of your investments uh, that you might want to consider and use. Repurchase agreements. Um, a school says I'm going to put my money in something for a number of days, takes it to the bank, and then the bank repurchases the securities and the school system receives the original investment plus interest. And that happens, especially in growing districts. So. The general public can do money market certificates, money market funds, and passbook savings. Yields reflect the going interest rate, but I would, small amounts, high liquidity, this is something that if it crashes, you're screwing the district over completely. So try to keep that in mind as you're looking at that as a potential option. So commercial paper system is the last system. School systems can purchase these. They have high interest rates and are not secured. Oklahoma permits it but the district has to approve this type of purchase. So that's it. This is really an idea of investments, but when I go over the Lewis book, you're going to see what those investments look like. Our next chapter is personnel management, which is my favorite area in schools. Try to look at it from a financial perspective, and we'll understand the premise of school management. Thank you.